A lot of the times people think their only option for financing is a conventional or FHA loan, and those are just a couple of the options. This market has shifted and it is now much easier for the buyer to ask for seller concessions, to ask for the seller to give you some things as an incentive for you buying that property. Understanding what this percentage is at any given time in your market will help you know if you if it's a a good time and b how aggressive you can be you know 2023 is going to be your year you're going to buy that property that first property that second property now you need to figure out what steps do i need to start taking now to prepare myself to buy that property in 2023 what loan products are out there how am i going to find the down payment what is it that i need to do to best take advantage of all the opportunity coming my way well if this is where you're at stick around i'm going to give you a few things you should be focused on right now to best prepare you to buy a property in 2023. What's going on? Henry Washington here with Bigger Pockets, and we are wrapping up our video series on how you can best prepare yourself to take advantage of the opportunities to buy property in 2023. So if you want to go and watch the previous videos, you can Click the link in the description and check those videos out. As always, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. And please like this video, subscribe to the channel so we can keep feeding you amazing content through our YouTube channel. And let's get to it. Well, if you're here right now, I'm super proud of you because you've made that decision that you're going to buy a property in 23 and any great plan, any great business, any great idea starts with just that, with making the decision. So congratulations to you for doing that. And now you're here trying to learn what actions you need to take to actually put that in play. So that is awesome. When I first bought my very first property, man, there was a lot I didn't know when I got started and now that I have the experience as an investor, I want to share with you some ways that you can prepare yourself to not only buy that property in 23, but buy the right property with the right loan product and get the best rate in terms possible for you to maximize your return on your investment. All right, so I've broken these prep steps down for you into four steps. Number one is preparing your credit. Number two, finding the loan products and getting pre-approved. Three, preparing for your down payment. And four, knowing your numbers and metrics. So credit is very important when it comes to you being able to buy property. Unless you're gonna pay cash, you're gonna use leverage, right? And that means you're gonna have to borrow some money in order to buy this property. And let's face it, if your credit's not great or not in the right place, then you're gonna end up paying more for the money that you have to borrow via your interest rate. And we all know that interest rates are already high right now. And so you want to be able to get the best possible interest rate that you can. The best thing you can do is just to pull your credit report. There's a bunch of different places where you can pull your credit report. I'm not gonna point you to one specific one. You can do a Google search, figure out the best way for you to pull your credit report, but go through that credit report in detail. And what you're wanting to do is figure out what are the things that are pulling your credit down or what are the things that you can improve. I always say that step one, to fixing your credit or improving your credit is to take a look at some of the things that are on there that maybe that you still owe that are small. If you've got some small charges and things on your credit report that you can get paid off, well just pay them off. Pay the things that you feel like you can pay now and then consult a professional. There's credit repair companies, there are credit counseling companies. Talk to somebody who understands credit a little better than you and try to formulate a plan for what is the best options for you to pay things in the right order. All right, step two is researching loan products and picking the best loan product that fits the type of property that you're looking to buy and that fits your current financial situation. A lot of the times people think their only option for financing is a conventional or FHA loan, and those are just a couple of the options. And so I'm gonna talk at a high level about a few of those options to kind of open your mind to the research that you should be doing about different loan products. So obviously, yes, there are conventional loans, there are FHA type loans, 
loans. These are typically more low down payment type products and they're gonna be used mostly if you're gonna be living in the property. But you can use a conventional loan to buy an investment property. You're just gonna to have to put more down, typically 20 to 25% down. There's also non-QM loans. And so these are non-qualified mortgage loans or loans that are more geared for people who may not fit in the financial box that a conventional loan wants you to fit in. Maybe you're an entrepreneur and it's a little harder for you to prove your income. Maybe you're from a foreign country. Maybe your credit isn't as good. And so these non-QM loans are made for people who aren't the traditional buyers and the best place to find a non-QM loan provider is to work with a real estate brokerage who already has relationships with non-QM loan providers and they can put you in contact with uh, non-QM providers that have the best product for you. You can also look at small local regional banks. Small local banks have loan products that you can use to buy investment property. Use what's called a commercial loan from a small local bank to buy a residential property. It's typically going to require a smaller down payment than a conventional, so you can put less down, um, but the length of the amortization is going to be a little shorter, typically 20 to 25 years versus 30 years with a conventional mortgage. It's probably going to have an adjustable rate period after three or five years. So depending on the kind of property you're looking to buy or how long you're planning to be in it, or if you're going to flip it or you're going to rent it, one of these things might be a better option for you than the other. Please research all of them. There's also hard money lenders and private money lenders right? So hard money lenders are people who are in the business of lending money, which means it's a company that's going to lend you money that they've raised from some other groups of people. And they typically have all their rates and terms set on what they will or won't lend to, where they will or won't lend, or the types of properties they will or won't lend on. And so you can look up hard money lenders. You can also use private money. Private money Similar to hard money in that you're borrowing money from a person, but private money isn't as defined as hard money, where hard money says, these are the rates and terms that I offer. Private money, you can set those rates and terms between you and the borrower. Private money lender can be a friend or a family member. It can be a coworker, or it can just be somebody that says, hey, I'd like to loan money and come and talk to me and we can work out some rates and terms on what that is. And so they're uh, private money is a great way for you to get access to funds to buy a property or maybe just access to, uh, the funds to do the down payment for a property. If you want to learn more about these different types of loan products in more detail, I've done a video on this previously and we'll link to it in the description below so you can get more detail on these different types of loan products. All right, and our final prep step is to know your numbers. And we're not just talking about the numbers you need to know to know if you're buying a good deal or that you're going to get the best return on investment from that deal. Obviously, those are important, but we also want to understand our market numbers, our market analytics, so that we know, is this the best time to buy? How aggressive can we be in our negotiations? What kind of concessions can we ask for? Should we ask for? This market has shifted and it is now much easier for the buyer to ask for seller concessions, to ask for the seller to give you some things as an incentive for you buying that property and you understanding the metrics of your market because real estate is market specific can help you understand not only is this the best time to do those things, but how aggressive can I be when I do them? So some of the metrics I like to pay attention to are days on market. This is a measure of how long a property has been available on the open retail market. And the idea is that the longer a property has been on market, the more motivated that seller may be, which means the less you may be able to offer or the more you may be able to ask for from a concession. And so as you're looking for properties, you want to look for properties that may have been on the market a little longer and that helps you potentially get a better deal and get more out of that deal because they may be motivated to take a lower offer. Another metric that I like to pay attention to is your list price to sale price percentage, right? So this is the percentage at which homes that are listed are selling for. So for example, if 
the list price to sale price percentage is 99%. Well, that means properties are selling for about exactly what they're getting listed for. If the list price to sale price percentage is above 100%, that means people are paying more than list price for properties on average. And if the number is lower, that means that people are paying less than list price typically to buy properties. And so understanding what this percentage is at any given time in your market will help you know if you if it's a, a good time and B, how aggressive you can be. You also want to pay attention to inventory. That just means what's the supply of homes on the market, but you wanna pay attention to what direction that inventory is trending in. So a couple of ways I like to look at inventory is I like to look week over week at inventory. The amount of inventory is increasing week over week. To me, that says, hey, every week there's more houses available, which means sellers have more competition because there's more options for buyers like us. And so that means I can be a little more aggressive in my offer prices because there's tons of options out there for me or there's growing amounts of options out there. If you're looking at inventory and it's remaining flat or it's trending down, then you might need to think about being less aggressive so that you can get the deal that makes sense. I also like to look at inventory year over year. And this is a measuring stick to let me know like what is the health of the market overall because if I can look at 2019 numbers and 2020 numbers and 2021 numbers as compared to today, I can get a broad picture for if we have the proper amount of inventory to service the demand that's out there. And here's a little bonus prep step. Given the current market environment of high interest rates and days on market increasing and home values declining in some markets, this is a great opportunity to get some concessions from sellers, to get some additional things to help you as a buyer. And so to offset those high interest rates, if you're paying attention to your market, you may be able to ask for concessions to buy down your rate. Talk to your lender about being able to buy down your rate because not all loans will allow you to do this. And so make sure that the product that you're using will allow for your rate to be bought down. Talk to your realtor about negotiation strategies where you can ask for these concessions to help you get a better interest rate in this crazy environment. All right, there you go. Now you can start to formulate your plan of action for preparing yourself to buy property in 2023. We talked about preparing your credit. We talked about researching all the various loan options that are out there for you. We also talked about preparing yourself for your down payment in places you can start to look for funds to use for that down payment. And then we talked about knowing your numbers and your metrics of your market to help you understand how aggressive you can be when making your offers and whether it's a good time to start making those aggressive offers. And so if you found value in this video, please, please like the video, please subscribe to the channel. We thoroughly appreciate that. It helps us a ton. As always, if you want to learn more from me, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at the Henry Washington on Instagram. And as always, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you at the closing table.